right. Hello. Um, let's start talking about unit seven. So unit seven is called, um, it's all about bonding. So it's really all about electrons and how they uh, interact with each other. So this unit is kind of like going back to the periodic table and going back to the model of the atoms. So just a quick reminder, um, if we look back at our unit, uh, our unit, our notes on the atom, uh, this would have been back at the very, very beginning of the year. Um, we talked about atomic structure. Uh, we talked about protons and neutrons and electrons and all of that good stuff. Sorry, just making some minute adjustments to my screen. There we go. Um, and we talked about the, uh, the model of the electron that we had, um, a couple of different models. Um, I don't have pictures of them in all these notes, uh, particularly things like the Bohr models. So the way that electrons are organized into shells, that is totally true, but it's actually more complicated than that. Um, and that's when we're moving into uh, a more complicated version uh, or more, um, it is more complicated, but it's more accurate. Um, as time continues, we learn more and more about um, the structure of the atom and subatomic particles and all sorts of cool stuff like that. Um, at the time, it didn't seem relevant or, well, it was relevant, but it wasn't as important for us to get into these details, but I think now is the time to do so. So to truly understand the periodic table and how electrons function, this is cool stuff. So this is the current unit we're on. And we're gonna talk, uh, so you have the, these, these notes. Uh, the other notes were yellow, these are goldenrod. Um, so you'll wanna grab these. Um, they're available online as well as, um, uh, actually you should have a paper copy from your packet. Um, we're gonna go over a whole bunch of sections for this unit. Uh, we're gonna start by talking, giving you some background information on electrons um, and quant the quantum mechanic model, which sounds scary and kind of confusing, but it's actually pretty cool and really interesting. Um, we're then gonna go into an understanding of what the octet rule that we learned about is really all about, um, going back into the periodic table. We'll talk a lot more about electrons um, for sure. Uh, this unit will also take us into um, the, back to the periodic table and really understanding why the periodic table has this particular structure. Um, it was discovered slash invented by Mendeleev, um, but it wasn't until in like the 1800s, but it wasn't until like a century later that we actually understood why um, elements or why this table works so well and that there's a lot more going on to it. Um, so we'll talk about some periodic trends. That's definitely coming up. Um, and then we'll, that kind of gets us through um, electrons and then it's how in electrons interact with each other, which is bonding. Um, so we can talk, go back to the different types of, um, of compounds like ionic, covalent, or metallic um, and get into um, how, um, molecules, like the the, phys the, the three-dimensional shapes or geometry of molecules, and then how they interact with each other with intermolecular forces. So that's kind of the whole scope of uh, the unit that we'll, that we'll go through. Uh, but let's start from the very beginning. And what we'll do for this particular, um, this video is I'll go over electrons. Um, and then the next video, we'll talk about orbitals. So let me pull up this. Okay, here we go. So quantum mechanics is, um, was developed, it's a kind of a development in, in science um, in physics in um, the kind of 1900s, so like the 20th century, um, especially related to, it developed a lot around the uh, discovery and building of the atomic bomb. Um, it's related a lot to Einstein uh, worked on, on this theory as well as a whole bunch of other scientists like Oppenheimer and Planck. Uh, Niels Bohr himself was involved in this whole process. Um, oh my gosh, Richard Feynman, who's one of my favorites. Um, and a whole bunch of other people I can't remember off the top of my head. But anyways, it is a um, kind of a mathematical, mathematically explains uh, the behavior of subatomic particles and their interactions with each other. So the quantum mechanical model, um, yeah, it's just more details about how electrons behave. This is um, the fundamental, uh, like this is the fundamental model of all of physics. Um, it's kind of complicated, but I can walk you through it. Um, 
you do not have to know any of this stuff. I just think it's really interesting to see. So we've got the structure of the atom here um, at the very heart of this. So um, we have that atoms are made up of, have a nucleus that have protons and neutrons, but protons and neutrons are not the smallest thing there are. They're actually quarks, which are even smaller. Protons and neutrons are made up of quarks. Um, quarks uh, come in different flavors. I love, I love quarks just because they come like, their, their names are flavors, which are up, down, charm, top, bottom, charm, and strange. Just, just tickles me. I think it's hilarious. Um, you then have uh, around the nucleus, you have, of course, the electrons. Um, and that electrons are um, a different type of um, particle. Um, I've got another diagram here. Oh, this, this is like, this is the attempting to unify all of physics, which is like a huge project in the world of science. Um, it includes a whole bunch of different types of interactions like gravity and all sorts of cool stuff. Um, oh, this is fun. This is all the particles. So um, they're organized by different types. So you have um, lep quarks and leptons and bosons. Um, so let's see what we got here. Um, let's see if we can find. So quarks are what make up uh, protons and neutrons. Uh, the electron is a type of lepton. Um, so they're particles that have very small mass, but do have some mass. And then you end up with bosons, which are like gluons, which is what holds quarks together, um, and photons, which is light. But we actually know photons don't have mass. So it's like a particle that doesn't have mass. It's very strange, but very interesting. Um, and then, uh, oh, this one's like one of the more famous ones recently is the Higgs particle. This is the Higgs boson. Um, and it was really important because it was uh, it was actually discovered in the Large Hadron Collider. Uh, I forgot what year, maybe like last year or the year before that. It was kind of a really big deal in the world of science um, because in order for this model to be true, this particle had to exist. And if we couldn't find it, there was a lot of uncertainty about a lot of this whole model. Um, but by finding it, it was more evidence to suggest that this model is accurate. So um, in the world of science, it was a really, really big deal, the Higgs boson. Um, it was referred to as the God particle for a while, while too, but it, it was a little overblown. It was like, all right, calm down people. Um, anything else here that's particularly interesting? Well, you got neutrinos, I think are in there, positrons which is like an electron, but positively charged. Anyway, so there you go. Um, way more than you need to know, but I think it's kind of cool. Okay, so um, this is a video. I'm not gonna show it to you in this, in this video because that seems a little ridiculous, um, like a video within a video, but I do wanna just, I would like you to go watch it. Um, this is one of the TED Ed videos that helps to explain um, some of the uh, the wave particle duality and nature of electrons. So I'm gonna play just the very beginning so you know it's the right one. That all stuff. You probably know that all stuff is made up of atoms okay. and that an atom is a really, 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 really tiny part. So this video is really great and you definitely should go check it out. Um, what it kind of goes through is explaining how um, electrons aren't like little particles that just orbit around. Um, I'm gonna have to show you, some of this is very good. Let's see if I can find a good section of it. Um, electrons aren't just little particles that orbit around um, the nucleus. They, um, they act sort of like waves in that there are places where electrons are likely to exist and they don't travel the way that normal particles do. They just kind of like blip in and out of existence, essentially. It's a little more complicated than that, but as that's the concept, the, con the way I conceptually think about it. Um, and that they, the electron cloud is the place where electrons are most likely to exist. So let me just see if I can find a good little section here. Some number of neutral mm -hmm. particles called nope. hydrogen because it has... Boop, boop. Indulge me in American boop. models for atoms since Democritus in 400 BC, and yeah. there will almost certainly be many more. To so I just want to show you this because this is good. This is a really great example of the timeline or history of the development of the atomic model, starting with like just as a ball and then moving into something more and more complicated. The quantum model is what we currently have now, but we might learn more um, and refine the model even further. 
Um, so let's see if we can find the next little. Love electron. Electrons, electrons are weird. They, they are so to weird. behave either as particles, like little baseballs, or as waves, oh, gosh, like is. water waves, depending on the experiment that we perform. That's true. One of the weirdest things about electrons is that we can't exactly say where they are. It's not that we don't have the equipment. It's that this uncertainty is part of our model of the electron. So we can't pinpoint them. Fine. But we can say mm -hmm. there's a certain probability of finding an electron in a given space around is. the nucleus. And that means that we can ask the following question. If we drew a shape around the nucleus such that we would be 95% sure of finding a given electron within that shape, what would it look like? Here are a few of these shapes. Yeah. Chemists call them orbitals, and what each one mm -hmm. looks like depends on, among other things, how much energy it has. The more energy in orbit, past a certain distance from the nucleus, the probability okay. of the electron, so past a certain distance from- This is kind of showing us this electron cloud of where we are likely to find electrons. Um, this is the high chance area, but as you go away, you still might be able to find an electron. It's just less and less likely. In the nucleus, the probability of finding an electron starts to decrease more or less exponentially. There it is. Which means that while it will approach zero, it'll never actually hit zero. It's true. So in every atom, there is some small but non -zero. I like the way that they show that this electron is kind of booping around. It's not like traveling. It's just kind of like popping in and out of existence. It's a good way to conceptualize electrons. Zero. Probability that for a very, very short period of time, Ooh. one of its electrons is at the other end of the known universe. It's so true. It's possible. But mostly electrons stay close to their nucleus as clouds of negative charge Aww. density that shift and move with so time. Cute. How electrons from one atom. Okay, I'm going to stop it there. I said I wasn't going to show you the video, but I couldn't help it. It was so good. Uh, but yeah, go watch the whole thing. It's great. Um, but what we can get out of that um, is a few things. So first of all, this is something you can write down. Um, that electrons behave like waves and particles. And you can think of them as being like either existing in a whole area, like the way a wave exists in like, it takes up a whole amount of space or like in a very particular discrete, discrete meaning like specific um, and like bound within a certain area, just um, location. Um, one of the cool things that this video does mention is the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, um, which is that we, it's not possible, we cannot know the position and velocity of an electron or any other subatomic sub particle at the same time. We can know how fast it's going or we can know where it is, but not both. Um, it's just kind of, it's kind of cool. Um, if you, uh, if you ever watched Breaking Bad, he, uh, Walter White calls him, his like uh, code name is Heisenberg and this is where he got Heisenberg from. Um, so, yeah, electrons are really, really weird. That's kind of the overall idea here. Uh, there's another famous thing when you're talking about um, the quantum mechanics is the Schrodinger's cat. This was a thought experiment um, that was kind of help explain some of these ideas about um, specifically about superposition and entanglement, but basically the idea that particles can exist um, kind of in different places almost at the same time. Kind of a weird concept. Um, it's all part of this whole quantum mechanical model. Uh, I'll, there's another video about it um, that I would love for you to watch. This one, I'm not actually gonna make you watch the whole thing. I promise this time, I'll just start it again so you know what it looks like. Austrian physicist, Erwin Schroding. Okay, that's the whole thing. Um, you can watch that. Um, I'll make. I'll put a link in. I'll try to remember to put a link in the doobly do, um, to, yeah, to watch. It's cool. It's about cats. Nobody, nobody actually ever killed a cat. Don't worry. That was part of the experiment. Was whether a cat is going to be dead. Um, the kind of famous catch line from it, or like the famous uh, quote from it, is like Schrodinger's cat is is dead and not dead, like at the same time. So it's kind of fun. Okay. That's actually where we're gonna stop for here. Uh, you have those notes, you've got some videos to watch. Our next step is now to talk about orbitals and we will do that in the next video. So I will see you then.